All right, the weekend of thrashing is over and the razor's finally done. Um, just gonna go out, kinda go around and show you what turned out, and what didn't turn out. Um, really only had one major issue that I still gotta resolve. Um, we're gonna get to it here, and I hope you enjoy the video. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna start at the front, obviously the winch. I did end up going with a factor 55. Um, <clears throat> mainly because I didn't like how far the main hook stuck out and I was afraid of that hook actually damaging this. Um, I'll, I'll show it to you over here. Uh, but it doesn't come with a bump stop. So you end up with this back, this back piece and this uh, cotter that could spin around and poke into the front of that fair lead. So I did, I went with this nice, simple, smooth. Um, I already had all of the uh, utilities to use this, basically a strap and uh, a shackle to put through this hole um, on the old razor. So there was no, no reason not to do that. Uh, another thing is this camera, I've already mentioned it before in a previous video. If you're putting one of these in, make sure that you actually run the camera through the pl pl piece of plastic that's behind this. Um, again, your connector is gonna be about right in here. You kinda have to pry that up a little bit to get to it. Uh, welcome back, obviously, I uh, have the new shock set therapy uh, springs in here. Shocks are a little tough to get out up at the top. One thing I'll mention, if you're taking these live wires out for the very first time, they usually do have a tie strap through the shock body. There's a little hole in a, a basically a plastic rivet with a tie strap hole in it. Um, cut the strap, be careful and don't damage the uh, holder that goes through. And you can just put a new strap in. Uh, again, you have to disconnect it up here i don't know if that's going to come through on video all that great but basically you just press this disconnect it and be sure to cut that strap <clears throat> um i don't remember which side was easier but one side's pretty easy to get to the top bolts the other side is really difficult um i did leave the tires on i think i would have had a little bit easier time maybe if i would actually pull the tire off uh, but i did not do that so going on back uh went with a super atv uh tilt uh windshield this is really simple basically this clamps it's got three different positions basically you've got barely or closed this would be the closed this would be barely open and then obviously disconnected will cause the gas shocks to flip the window all the way out just to show you some detail here that something i really wasn't able to see online um this is how far back basically you can plan on this pretty much going back to the natural roll bar line about right here. Um, I did go with a, I think this was a Kinemoto roof. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. Um, but there's plenty of room. Um, you can kind of see not, not much gap there. Uh, but what you don't want to do is end up with a roof that you can't actually use with this, with this windshield. So hopefully if you're looking at either this windshield or this roof, this may give you some, a good idea. Um, light bar i went with the amazon special rigid horse this thing worked great all you really have to do is put this additional little bend in this bracket and it'll bolt right up right up to the stock bolts you can kind of see there um, and it's not going anywhere uh, nice nice rigid mount it's not going anywhere um, i took my cable run it up and it's not really pinched but it's held there in place it does go back up over and then back into the roll bar here um, so on this particular razor i ended up using both sides um, i ran all of my rock lights to the rear through the roll bar out the bottom tube section um, if you look right back at the very back uh, tube section there's actually a similar um, little gateway like these have on them out the side you can basically run from here all the way to the back of the machine. So it may save you some time. Uh, from what I understand, I did not take mine out, but this center console is like super hard uh, to disassemble. Uh, way harder in previous versions. Previous versions, you took out a couple of bolts, some push pins, and the whole thing come out. My understanding is you actually have to take the sides off, that side off, and it's actually an assembly that's built as a hoop. Um, so it, it does take quite a bit of work. Um, Again, on all the electrical, um, I initially started wiring just getting through this access port. Um, you can basically pull this out. Uh, 
and get to most of the wiring from there, but I highly recommend it doesn't take that much longer just to go ahead and pull the whole dash off. I went through that in the last video, the tools I used to get these little trim pieces off. <clears throat> Going back, uh, again, I reused off my old razor these windfall mounts. This tube here is an inch and three quarters. This tube is larger. It's two inch. Uh, so if you're trying to reuse some components, uh, just be mindful that, you know, really this is the only section uh, here and I may end up having to do something else because I think I am going to get this storage. Hopefully it only attaches these bars and doesn't get in the way, but we'll see. Um, these HMF rock sliders. Uh, so these are, are really well built. One thing I'll mention, this front bolt here, you pretty much have to beat and twist that bolt in first. You can kind of see there, I've scuffed up the paint a little bit, just trying to get the bolt actually through. I tried the bottom and the top to no avail, and it just, it just barely fits. Once you get the bolt in, um, let's see if I can find a little shot here of this. So there's an aluminum spacer, and there's three of them. That's on each one that spaces out. Um, you do have to take off your bottom skid plate. Um, and one thing I'll mention on this skid plate is there's actually plastic hooks that hook onto the frame. So even once you take the bolts out, you really need to put quite a bit of force. I, I did the front first. Um, and basically you need to pull that down because basically it's got like a big plastic um, hook that actually clamps around the, the bottom bar. Um, that's something I hadn't dealt with before, but they actually protrude from the skid plate and are, and are molded in. And they're, you know, they kind of look like that, like basically a clamp. So basically what you're having to do is pull and pry those out so that it'll release. Um, but on these, on these particular um, rock sliders, the bolts go all the way through the frame. There's a, uh, a washer, a big fender washer uh, that goes on the back that captures the tube. Um, I think when I when I screwed mine in a little bit, I wanted to get good torque on them, and I noticed the fender washers kind of mushed in a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, the fender washers are actually a little bit bigger than the tube, so even though they it kind of sucked in a little bit, they still fit up just fine. But I do like these. Uh, to my knowledge, the reason I went with these, these are the only ones that actually come back far enough to keep you from getting hung. Basically, that's how much room you have, maybe a hand's width of room between the tire and this. And this does actually come right to the edge of the tire. Um, all of the other ones that I saw, they you know they stopped right here, which gives a huge amount of area for like a tree or a rock or something to actually catch up. But that's why I chose these. <clears throat> Inside, I went with the standard Amazon switches. The only other switch that you'll see here is that one winch switch. Um, I already showed in a previous video underneath that there is a uh, I did install the worn uh, adapter what I did is I cut off my little end flanges off of it so that I could screw through the right side um, I don't know that this is going to come through great on camera but I'll try it's probably not going to come out that great but way up underneath there so we're looking at the switches if you look down at the pocket underneath there's actually a spot for a uh, remote winch cable and it does fit the the worn the only thing you have to do is there's two little nubs sticking out of the back of the worn lop those off so it'll sit flush and uh, bolt it up no big issue uh, one thing i was impressed with uh, on the pro xp you can see there i've got a little place for my straps there's actually quite a bit of room behind the seats there is a um a belt mount over there you can see it in some of the other ones and some people have mentioned it on razor forums that um, on the other side, there's actually two two holes in the plastic, and there's, you can actually buy a belt pincher so you can put a spare belt over on that side. Um, but there's a lot of room back here to put whatever. This is kind of a little plastic pocket on this side, so that's where I'm, I'm going to keep my strap stuff. I did go with door bags this time. Uh, got those installed. Pretty easy install. And oh, one thing I forgot to mention is the Midland. So I did what I said I was gonna do. I basically pulled out that CAN bus uh, connector. The diagnostic port is like right here. I popped that out and tucked that up underneath the dash and installed the Midland uh, right in this flat space underneath. It doesn't get in the way of anything. Um, the only issue that I've had is this has not stuck great. 
Um, this is adhesive, and I, it's already come off a couple of times, didn't do any damage to the finish. More than likely, I'm probably going to get a magnetic mount and just hang it up there all the way at the top to keep it out of the way. And again, I'm, I apologize for the uh, darkness, but this is the spring thingy, I think, uh, brake release. That's really easy. You basically take out two nuts, and that is a parking brake. You don't want to use that as a parking brake. It's more of a, you know, you're in a bad spot. You want to stay stable for, for a little bit uh, in an emergency. You pop that on, and it'll actually apply the brakes. I would not leave my razor um, on that, either trailering or parked for a long time it's it's kind of like to keep the parking uh, mechanism from getting bound up you can apply that and get some brake pressure rear springs uh shock therapy um i did use a spring compressor what i ended up doing um i'll go over it in a second but basically i just put this part uh into this into the compressor i didn't even clamp it i was real careful um I don't really recommend doing that. You really have to pay attention to it, but um, it compresses these with no problems. Uh, you do have to be mindful of that hook that's on the inside that it doesn't come and contact this shock body. On everything but these rears, um, the fronts, you can go up high, way higher than the shock body and catch it here where you're not running any risk of hitting this. Just make sure you go up high enough. On these rears, the first time I put these on, I, I literally finished this and went back and watched the shock therapy video one thing i'll mention these rears this piece flips upside down um so you do the front and you've got the long body pointed down towards the shock these rears are reversed the long piece should be pointed up so i got to assemble and disassemble these shocks twice um which wasn't a lot of fun but i'm glad i noticed it when i did um on these the hooks on the on the spring compressor that I used, they will either, the best place to hook is either right at this or right here. And mainly what you're trying to do is get the face of that hook, you know, hitting this plastic and don't catch, you know, away from the plastic because then you're going to be on, and you know, that hook's going to catch on your threads or on the shock body. But this, this can be used for the hook to basically pull on that and the hook won't, won't dig into this plastic. And it worked just fine. Uh, another thing I mentioned on the shocks, uh, so these are obviously indexed here. Um, but you do want to kind of pay attention. The best thing I can tell you is these guards always face the opposite of this. And you can kind of look at your eyelet either up here or down here and uh, get these lined up close. You can still move them around if you need to when you put the shock in. The other issue I had um, are these uh, little absorbers here. The trick to these is don't, I, I didn't have a lot of luck just prying through the spring like they showed in the video. The best thing to do is there's a slot in this here. And you can take something, I used a screwdriver, it'd probably be more ideal to use something a little bit more blunt. But if you press down through that slot, so it would be this direction. So you press like right on the top of this, just be careful and don't hit your rod. Um, once they start moving, if you kind of can keep momentum, it'll actually push all the way down. So the first shock that I did, it took a really long time to get this thing out of the way so you can get the, uh, the retainer off. Uh, after I figured that out, it went really quick. So this will be the one thing that I have had issues with. Um, when I crank my razor up in park or neutral, this is whirring around. You can hear it. Um, this shouldn't be engaged. Um, I took a couple of, of uh, camera shots. I'll try to blend these into the video if I can think about it when I cut this. Um, but basically, this belt is too far out this way. I've taken this bolt off. I only had two shims in here. Um, so you, I think the manual says you can do eight. Uh, one thing, Another thing I'll mention is all the videos out there are, are for like uh, uh, Ranger XP 1000s or... 2020 rain uh, razor pro xps the 2021 has a smaller bolt if you go and look the, do not torque this bolt to 40 foot pounds like all the videos are saying this is supposed to be 26 foot pounds um torqued um so i have ordered the shims uh, and luckily uh, i had too few shims i actually need to shim this primary or secondary clutch back 
to get this belt over probably like maybe two more shims so i'll be at four maybe five um and that should get this running right and hopefully those will come in this week uh, i kind of took a two-fold approach uh, i needed a belt anyway so uh, i went to parkzilla and ordered some shims i wish they had them in stock and a belt a spare belt um option number two uh i did find these on mcmaster car and the cool thing about mcmaster car is where i'm at i can ship ground from mcmaster car and still get the stuff the next day so i, I should see those from mcmaster car on tuesday uh, so just a suggestion if you needed those and the mcmaster car uh, part is the exact same den specification same size and it's also eight dollars for 25 so i'll try to find a link for that somewhere uh, but you can go on to my master car and find these easy so i got storage installed this is the kenamoto box this is not the official razor box and all of the stuff that i had in my previous razor fit nicely um worked really well i have still not found a cooler solution um, I've got a couple of coolers that'll fit. The biggest problem that I've ran into is the handle. So if you buy like a you know a normal cooler, they have a handle, but no, not necessarily anywhere to really strap down to. There are some that do have strap downs, but none that would just fit. I've kind of looked around and really haven't seen anybody that makes them out for these yet uh, for the aftermarket coolers. So if you have any suggestions, please leave me a comment down below and I'll check them out. Um, but I'm still looking for some kind of cooler to put in here that's mounted that I can easily get out uh, to, for cleaning. <clears throat> Let's buzz around to the other side here. You can kind of see that spacer a little bit better. It's right there uh, for that HMF. Um, and again, these are the same, uh, same series as what I did for the front bumper. So there it is, it's ready to ride. And uh, you know, in about six more days, I should have this out on the trail, which will be really cool. I've been looking forward to it. Um, it's been a long wait just even getting the razor and then, you know, much less rate waiting for riding season to start. Um, anyway, I hope, uh, hope you liked the video and please remember to like and subscribe. And if you see anything uh, that I can do about that cooler in the back, please leave me a comment. That's the only, really the only additional thing uh, that I don't know how I'm going to solve. Uh, the only really other thing I may add is I may add that uh, the storage. Polaris makes one and Super ATV make one. Not necessarily for a spare tire, but I would like somewhere that if I wanted to carry a chainsaw or something like that um, for work weekends, etc., I would have a spot to put that. All right. That's it for this video. We'll see you on the next one.